And it's watch her, catch her, jump up in your gibber Jerry? sheet. Gibber sheet and let her slide Nothing. the boys of pursuit. I, I still can't hear anything. You ought to see us howling as the winds are coming free. A passage down the buffalo over Milwaukee. And I was simply last I should... day the Buffalo Creek at last. And under exhilarator, the bigler she's made fast. And in some longer beer saloon, we'll let the bottle pass. For we're all jolly shipmates, we'll take a social glass. Now let's watch her, catch her, jump up in a chipper too. Give her a sheet and let her slide the boys a push her through. You ought to see us howling as the winds are blowing free. A passage down the buffalo from Milwaukee. Now let's watch her, catch her, jump up in your chipper too. Give her a sheet and let her slide the boys a push her through. You ought to see us howling as the winds are blowing free. So thank you and welcome for those of you just coming in. Hello. I feel like I'm at that old uh, that old uh, children's show. Remember where you look in the mirror and say, I can see, I can see Trig and Mary, and I can see. That's what we're looking at right now. And in the meantime, for all of you coming in, um, thanks again for joining us tonight to celebrate Chicago's maritime history and the museum's mission and accomplishments. You know, I'm no, certainly no stranger to CMM, or actually I'm predecessor CMS. I definitely remember being in, being, being in Phil Elm's real estate office in Hyde Park and just dreaming about something like this happening someday. It's pretty amazing. The museum, on the River opened in 2016, and since that time, thousands of patrons and guests have walked through the doors to engage in a world of local and regional maritime history. Tonight, however, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. Tonight, you're gonna to join us on the ground floor of something um, that we're launching. It's a major community outreach program to engage our friends and members to truly come on board, and not just the, this year, but for years to come. CMM Festival supports community outreach by honoring Bill Pinckney as our keynote speaker for his work engaging inner city school children with his solo journey across the world, a total solo circumnavigation on his sailboat commitment back in 1990. Your donations in tonight will in part raise funds for a permanent Bill Pinckney exhibit. Tonight, your group competes for fundraisers with our paddle raise. Now, I actually did bring a paddle, but that was not necessary. You don't have to do that. You're going to have a virtual paddle down at the bottom of your screen, which is basically a hand raise. And you hit that hand raise, which will be a whole lot easier. And uh, that way your group can compete um, for top fundraiser at our paddle raise. You can, um, take you live to the museum as our auctioneer will engage in a lively banter with two historical reenactors, Abe Lincoln and uh, Louis Le Voyageur. It's going to be a ton of fun. Now, as a little housekeeping with the paddle raise, you may want to practice this, how to raise your paddle. So tap the participant icon. It's usually at the bottom of your screen. And it's sort of like, like that, hand raise. Then tap the blue hand raise button. Oh, if you're on a phone or a tablet, uh, you might need to tap the screen to have a participant um, icon appear. Let's just see if you can all do that. See if you can, ah, I got two raising hands, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, well, that's that looks pretty good. If you're having trouble with any of that, just type into the chat, I'm having trouble raising my paddle. And you know, we'll get that taken care of as soon as possible. You know, 2020 has been a challenging year for everybody, including the Chicago Maritime Museum. Flood damage by storm waters, COVID-19, and reimagining some of our standard activities and events like Third Fridays and developing virtual content has been quite the challenge. And uh, your participation tonight and your generosity tonight 
will help offset some of that and inspire some new programs as well. If you haven't been down to the Maritime Museum, you should definitely try to do that. Call before you come and uh, make sure the hours are what you think they are. Um, join. The best way to do this is to become a member. Join tonight if you can. Become a member of the Chicago Maritime Museum and help forward the whole mission of preserving and educating people about this phenomenal maritime history that Chicago, the Great Lakes, and the world around us have that we all share, that we all share. At the end of the paddle race, join us for a maritime music program by Lee Murdoch, who's a favorite of the Chicago Maritime Festival for years and years. And let's see. Where are we? I'm just looking. Hello, Kath. There we go. Now, I'm just going to blather on and on until someone cuts me off, I think is what we're going to do. So I'm just looking at the chat right now. From Kath Thomas to everyone, welcome to the CMM Festival 2020. So happy to see you at the Chicago Maritime Museum Festival. Thanks. Go, Tom. There we go. I'm going. Okay, that's really good. And again, if you need to communicate with someone or you're watching, let's say, Bill Pinckney or Lee Murdoch or, or anybody giving, um, or Abe and uh, Louis, uh, you can also enter into the chat to talk with other people. I think it's sort of the digital way of being in the audience of a concert or a, or a theater program and just kind of turning quietly to the person next to you and saying, we can do that digitally with the chat feature. So anytime you want to do that, don't forget to do that. Sue wants me to go a little longer. So we're going to go, there we go. My, um, my participation with the maritime world in Chicago started in the 1980s aboard the old schooner Charlotte Ann. And uh, in fact, Dave Truitt is with us tonight, as I would suspect other Charlotte Ann alumni as well. And from there on, I went out and got a captain's license. And for the last 20 years or so, I've been captaining vessels on the Great Lakes, singing music about them, making up tales from time to time, both musical and in prose. Ah, here we go. Typos are all my, never, oh, sorry about that. Happy to be here. Yes, Charlotte and alumni are here. Yes, excellent. Okay, um, you could, oh, by the way, you could all put your hands down now. I forgot. It's like a nautical Simon says, you, um, you don't have to keep them up all the time. Yeah, take your hands down. Richard, Colin, Tom, Marge, Carol. There we go because otherwise you might be bidding on, on something you, you don't know. So everybody has to start at the same time. There we go, that's it. Mr. Martin, let's see. That is looking really, really, really good. Yeah, for those of you not familiar with Chicago's maritime history, it is of course the reason Chicago is here, um, having the river system and the Great Lakes system all here at the same time. And the thing I've always loved about it, even as a kid, is that you could go down to Lake Michigan, get on a boat and end up anywhere in the world. And uh, actually you can go down to the Maritime Museum, go through Bubbly Creek uh, in your canoe, and you can uh, experience the same thing. Travel anywhere in the world from there. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful experience. Let's see, where are we now? We got the paddle raised down. We are talking about uh, helping us out tonight. Um, again, if you don't have uh, an idea about the vast maritime history of Chicago and the Great Lakes, the Maritime Museum is the place to start. And um, to learn about things like uh, the Eastland disaster, uh, the Voyager, and uh, someone near and dear to my heart, uh, Ralph Fries. Uh, the Ralph Fries exhibit and uh, Mr. Canoe. Just keep those things in mind when you come in because uh, you'll meet a lot of very, very wonderful and interesting people. Oh yes, we do have Joan from the Upper Peninsula. That's excellent. 
let's see who else is there who else wants to throw me um um a message in chat that would be awesome there we go hi oh hi that's great to see you but yes we're going to start in just a little bit again for those of you just coming it's a little hard i'm kind of in the digital lobby right now and um, i figure i would just go over some of this again, again, 2020, as we know, as you know right now, has just been one heck of a difficult year. And uh, the Maritime Museum had a little too much water. You know, don't forget, we're right on the banks of the South Branch of the Chicago River, right around Bubbly Creek. And uh, the water levels rose and flooded the museum. That's one of the things that we are raising money for right now. Um, it's really, really wonderful to have you aboard. Uh, of course, during COVID-19, the museums had to revision some of their um, some of their regular programs, like Third Fridays, uh, and turn them into virtual festivals like this one tonight. Oh, underwater explorers! Yes, come up for air and toast to the Chicago Maritime Museum. That's fantastic! Fantastic. Oh. I'm not going to say that. I no, that's not a good idea. That's okay. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the breakout rooms at six thirty-five, and for those of you who are there, and there are tons of you there. This is absolutely wonderful to see. Oh, Jim Jarecki, Lee Murdoch, Dirk Lohan. Um, oh my God, people I haven't seen in a long time. Scott Reimer, fantastic. Listen, I can only see a few of you at a time, so. We're going to check the digital paddle raise at this point. And um, you'll find that hand icon towards the bottom of your screen. If you could just hit that right now, click that right now. We want to make sure that you're all literally on board at the same time. That would be really great. So basically, I'm just going to read my directions when it comes to that again. Hi, Beller. Uh, let's see. Yeah, because raising your paddle might be slightly different depending on the instrument that you're using, whether you're using a, a phone, an Android, uh, an iPhone, uh, a Mac, or a PC. And uh, sometimes things will be affected by your broadband width as well. So definitely do that. Um, again, tap the participant icon and then tap the blue raise hand button. And if you're on a phone or a tablet, you might need to tap the screen first to have the participant icon appear. So let me check through that. I'm seeing more and more. Matt Howard, I haven't seen Matt Howard in years. That is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. That is great. We have over 70 in the waiting room right now. And that's, that is really rewarding. It's great to see. Great to see. Jim, Doug Walker, Earl Smith, Ina Pinkney. Okay. Claire Gadboy. Oh, Claire, it's so good to see you. William Pint, some of our Mar Chicago Maritime Festival people. Uh, We've mentioned the Chicago Maritime Festival. Um, we did it for 14 years. If you want to see some phenomenal performances, including uh, Lee Murdoch, Tom and Chris Castle, and other ones, William Pint, uh, Pint and Dale, uh, go to YouTube and just Google Chicago Maritime Festival. And Bill Strauss was very kind and talented enough to record all of the evening concerts for the festival for well over a dozen years. So there's singers from all over the world from england and ireland france the netherlands the south pacific and of course all around the united states and canada absolutely incredible it's good stuff let's see oh don't forget put your hands down again put your hands down let's see most people are doing that's great oh cindy Sargent. oh so good to see you that's great Matt and Tracy are here. I feel like I'm down at Burnham Harbor a long, long time ago. That's fantastic. 
Don, Zon, uh, Ron, hello, good to see you. Peter Goldman, Orion. Oh, fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Good stuff. I believe we'll be breaking out to our rooms right now, if I can get a, a confirmation on that. That's great. So basically, put your screens down, uh, put your hands down, put your screen over to um, speaker view at this point, just in case you're out looking at who else is around. Speaker view will basically uh, feature whoever is speaking. So definitely do that and make sure that your microphone is muted as well, because there's a, you'll sound like you're, um, you're in a tunnel otherwise. That's really good. Let's see. Also, when you get into your breakout rooms, uh, go to speaker view in that room as well. For important, uh, important point there. Okay. Oh, and how someone asked, Claire asked, how do we get to those breakout rooms? You don't have to do anything. Basically, um, the administrator will just take us all and digitally move us to the room that we want to be in a little later. Okay. That is fantastic. Okay. We have 76 in the room right now. There we go. Bill Pinckney will be joining us from Puerto Rico. And um, tonight, again, we're basically on the ground floor of uh, something entirely different. And we're asking for your help to help us launch a major community outreach program to engage all the friends of the museum are our friends of the maritime community, patrons, and um, to come on board, and not just this year, but we need to make this go year after year after year. Um, we need to pass this down to the next couple of generations and uh, to tell the story. And that's, uh, I think it's one of the most important things right now too. For those of you, and I know most of you have stories because a lot of you are sailors and divers, and researchers, and craftspeople, and artists. Um, don't forget to t write those stories down. I remember there was a fellow who came up to me at a concert one time and he said, my great grandfather was the captain of the biggest schooner on the Great Lakes. And I said to David Dowes, he said, yeah, that's the one. I said, do you, have any, do you have any stories? He said, no, nobody wrote them down. So don't be that person. We're just about ready to, um, just about ready to go to your rooms now. So I'll be signing off. It's great to see you all and welcome aboard. Great, um, it's Susan from Zoom here. Just a couple of you might still be in the main room because I'm still assigning you. So please be patient. Uh, I will briefly move you to the rooms where, where possible. So just bear with me.
Uh, Tom, just a heads up. I think um, we're just going to continue. Um... Okay. You want me to keep going? Hey there, Tom. Hey, Liz, thank you. Hi, Todd. couple people to the room there and it looks like we're still have quite a few people here in the digital lobby so um, I'll just keep going on for those people who are uh, just coming in late I'm Tom Castle I'm your lobby host today and uh, actually I'm kind of standing on standing at the base of the gangway ready for you guys to come aboard so uh, welcome aboard and um, 2020, again, has been a very, very strange year, a very challenging year for all, all of us, but especially for the Chicago Maritime Museum. Uh, some water damage, um, COVID-19, uh, and also having to re have a new vision of some of the programs we do, Third Fridays, um, programs like this one, now we have to do digitally online at this point, and uh, it is quite a challenge. Um, I don't know if you can see the number of people arriving, but it's a constant flow of people. And uh, so basically we're, we're on deck now. We're looking up at the mate and he's saying, we, can we hold, can we hold this, this sail for another five minutes? So that's, what, that's basically what we're doing right now. We're getting into the Halloween season, so uh, I'm just going to strum a little bit and tell you a little bit about the Black Dog of Lake Erie and uh, sort of a, um, oops, I'm getting a new message here. There we go. Will the water be calm and the wind it be fair? Don't think it's a safe time to sail. For a storm waits and whispers a wolf in its lair, and the hound will howl in the gale. A beast will howl in the gale. We were downbound on Erie, the moon in our way, like a leaf in the wind we were sent. Bristled back head to tail and climbed over the rail, and back to the darkness it went. Back to the darkness it went. Such a fright on the Jenkins that night. I told them it happened before. Warned them of times gone before. He was off Fort Colburn in late '62, up for the old Mary Jane. They all saw him well, that black hound from hell. They've never been seen again. Now the soul has been seen again. It's a safe time to sail, for the storm waits and whispers a wolf in its lair, and the hound will howl in the gale, a beast will howl in the gale. There's all kinds of legends, oh thank you, <laughs> all kinds of legends on the Great Lakes, and, uh, and that was one of them. Uh, Lake Erie, of course, is the is the shallowest, and uh, when there are storms on the on Lake Erie, it's like shaking up a uh, a very shallow bucket of water. And 
it can be really, really strange. I sailed on the Niagara a bit and uh, most places in Lake Erie, if your tall ship goes down, you just climb the rigging a few feet. So you'll never get wet, it's very shallow. Uh, let's see, so while we're doing this and I see ooh, a whole bunch of people coming on board. I will, for the sake of the people coming in late, um, and again, I think the I think the gangway analogy is pretty close. <laughs> Where you have a large crowd and everyone's trying to get on board the ship at the same time. It's really uh, that sort of thing. And again, everyone's screen will probably look a little bit different depending on what kind of device you're using, whether it's a, a Mac or a PC or uh, an iPhone, an Android. Um, if you're using a landline, it's not going to happen. So just put the landline down and see if you can get a computer from your kids. That will work. That will most likely work. Um, also, if you want to ask a question, uh, you can go into the chat, hit that little chat bubble at the bottom of your screen. And that way, just use your regular keyboard and type in a question or a comment as we go right now. Let's see. Oh, thank you, Lisa. That's great. <laughs> so again, tonight we are on the ground floor of something pretty different. And uh, this is like taking, a, taking a, new, a new vessel out for a shakedown cruise, as you can tell. Um, there are a couple of little uh, kinks in the armor here and there, but I think we'll be just fine. Again, one of the big purposes of tonight is to raise money for the Maritime Museum. Obviously, the museum's been impacted by COVID-19. People can't come and, uh, and just come to the museum anymore. Uh, that's really a, a tricky thing. Uh, there are no school buses of children being unloaded in Bridgeport and coming into the museum or anywhere else. So it is a really, really tough, tough thing to be doing at this point. Uh, let's see. Again, one of the things we'll be doing is doing the auction. And um, your group will compete for top fundraiser at our paddle raise. And again, the paddle is a virtual paddle that looks amazingly like a hand. So if you look at the bottom of your screen, for those of you who haven't tried it, we don't have to have everyone do it, but for those of you who haven't tried it yet, um, if you could maybe raise that digital hand at the bottom of your bottom of your screen there. If you have um, a notepad device or if you have a phone, you might have to tap the screen before you uh, before you see those icons. So definitely try to do that. Practice that uh, tonight, of course. CMM Festival supports community outreach by honoring Bill Pinckney, who's been a, a good friend to all of us in the Chicago Maritime community, and especially at the museum. Um, Bill has got a phenomenal story to his life, and, um, and he works uh, very hard, including school children and inner city school children around the world, um, as he was going on the first solo circumnavigation. And um, aboard a Valiant 40, I believe it was, commitment. And um, he kept track of uh, school, school kids kept track of him along each leg of the voyage virtually in their classrooms. And at the time that was, that was definitely um, edgy, <laughs> edgy, edgy uh, technology. Now we, uh, we attend classes that way when we're going to universities. But back in that day, that was really edgy. And, um, and um, Bill is one of the first people to do that. Well, one of the things the Chicago Maritime Museum is trying to do is to install, design, and build a, uh, a permanent Bill Pinckney exhibit. And uh, I hope for all of us who treasure Bill, uh, we can get that started as soon as possible. And let's see. I am just looking for commands here. 
Who else do we have here? Don Gazelle, fantastic. Here we go. John Bell, Matt Howard. It's nice to see some of the underwater, uh, the you ask people, the Underwater Archaeological Society of Chicago. Um, I'm not a very experienced diver, but I did go out to get to go out with you guys a few times. And um, one of the most exciting things I've ever done underwater was come upon a couple of shipwrecks that no one knew what they were uh, about 10 miles offshore. I won't say exactly where, but about 10 miles offshore. And uh, that was absolutely amazing. Let's see. Ooh, let's see, Ken. If you can, Bowen, if you could sh share that with um, the administrators, because I don't have the, uh, we're talking about sharing videos and sharing stories too, I guess. Let's see. Bum, 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 bum. Can you? Tom, this is sort of like we're all left here in the main room, but this was, we didn't get put into breakout rooms. I think we could be unmuted and talk to each other. Oh, I think that would be great. Yeah, I don't have the ability to do that, but I think that would be great. Well, people can unmute themselves. Okay, unmute yourselves. And what we should do is treat it like being on this the radio. This be our <laughs> cocktail hour. <laughs> oh my God, that's what I need to do, no wonder. <laughs> you sailors, I love it. <laughs> so, Although I do have wine, it's not a uh, rum. <laughs> oh, I'll fix that, actually, we do that. <laughs> But uh, what I would recommend, let's have a discussion and um, until we're waiting to get into those virtual rooms, or maybe we can just do the program in this room. Uh, if somebody can share video or share screen. I think uh, no, I think there will be here till about seven and then we'll get on with the program with the videos. Mm -hmm. Oh, gotcha. So I'm afraid I've only got one battle. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, when I'm going to... <laughs> what I recommend is what you should do is to uh, think about being on a marine radio. So when you talk before you speak, make sure no one else is on that channel. You know what I mean? Kel, that, uh, Kel Ward, yeah. Fairbank, Ken Fairbank. Yeah, Bill we Barrow. can hear you, Stan. Hello. You have a nice black background. How did you do that? Um, that's dark in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> And right off, and looking into the kitchen. <laughs> and it looks like we've got Abe with us. He's not talking though. <laughs> so if you guys are in gallery view now, you can see all of us in the room. And depending on your computer, you know, if you have smaller space, you'll get less pictures, less less people. Abraham, I mean, I've got twenty five, and we've got. 28 in this main room right now. If you're on a phone, you might only see four at a time and then you have to flip through. Oh, oh, oh and there's a, oh. Hope I just did something. Hey, you're live, babe. Let's see, I don't know. You're a lawyer. Oh. <laughs> I don't see anybody else. There's a. I don't think he's alive. The voyeur. The voyeur. Oh, no. He, he voyeur. actually. Voyeur. Oh, yeah. Voyeur. The uh, voyeur. Yeah. We are all voyeurs. You guys that aren't speaking are the voyeurs. Otherwise. <laughs> oh, we. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be a totally different program. <laughs> here's my cat. <laughs> Oh, we you have to pay extra for that one. one. <laughs> there he is. Okay, good. <laughs> Looks like Gabe Lincoln's here. Yeah, yep. Yeah, I see him. Um, he's, he's I understand you. Those that are at the museum, me. they can. They really only have one. They can only have one thing on at a time, or you get a real bad reverb. So they just. We will see them in a few minutes after the video. 
and my cat. <laughs> So how did you guys find out about this? Are you all members? Uh, no, Doug, Doug Walker is a good friend of ours who invited us. That's great. Have you ever been to the museum? We have not, but my wife and I are here. Hello. Hello. We're just, we're just talking about uh, how much uh, we don't know and thought we should definitely take our girls who are, are 10 and 12 down there to uh, take a look about. Yeah, well, you won't be able to do that right away, but... I heard, I heard, I heard the news. That's sad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you'll see, you'll see the lobby when we get there, but they're still working on the flood damage, unfortunately, but it's looking good. It's just all sort of in pieces at the moment. Yeah, Tom, you've done a nice job. We've been to enough of these Zoom things to know they never go as planned, and you always got to do a little... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> little soft shoe, little hat and cane dance, and you've yeah, done. Yeah, uh, I know. Yep, you done. You done good work here, my friend. No matter how many times you practice, and we practiced mm -hmm. and practiced. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, have, I have a question. Um, yeah. Did the water damage exhibit, or just made the floor mucky? Well, from what I could tell when I was down there, the exhibits looked like they were okay, and they had repaired all the drywall that had been damaged, but whatever was sitting on the floor might have gotten damaged. I couldn't see because it was all sort of moved around now. But the, the drywall has all been been redone. It looks really good. Oh, good. Okay, so I'm uh, at the museum. Oh, you can tell us. And uh, wow. yeah, if you, um, the, the water came to about two feet off the ground Wow. Uh, most of our exhibits were above that level. Um, so we actually didn't get damage to any exhibits, but um, the drywall had to get removed. Um, doors are all removed. Some of those are replaced. Some of those are still to be replaced. Um, there's painting going on. Uh, you can see everything sort of in uh, covered up mode and uh, things had to come off the walls so they could replace the walls. Um, files were wiped out. Yeah, it's it, it was a mess. Yeah, I thought the drywall looked really good because I know how I think it's really a hard thing to do. You need an expert to do that. So they did a good job, I thought. Yeah, it's looking good. Okay, now, even though we actually didn't get into a breakout room, everybody's going to be coming back here and for the rest of the program, it's sort of um, nice to be in speaker view because then you'll see a bigger picture for the main event. Carol, and you can tell people this is Ted I just got a call from Jim Wilkin who said he was writing a check for $1,000 to me. Oh, great. Great. Yeah, great. Great. Tom's hiding. Go. <laughs> uh oh. Is there a okay? Oh, Carol is still talking. Just a nautical accident when the glass hit the floor. <laughs> Uh, no loss of rum, I hope. <laughs> yes, there was. Oh, no. uh, sad, sad. And we're we're live. Live. Happy, happy, happy and live. Carolyn, we might want to talk about drinking, maybe. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> All right. I got a nice ham for dinner. Absolutely. Oh, now, now they're. I'm. I'm afraid they're asking us to remain muted, Tom. Sorry. 
Okay. Thank you, for your <laughs> patience. We are going to unmute anyway. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Oh, come on. Give us, give us an hour before you go, Matt. Hi, uh, right, Tracy. Hi, uh, Matt. This is your. The city of Big Shoulders began with wet feet. You can't truly know Chicago without knowing its waterways. They're the reason the city is here to begin with. In this city, two great watersheds come within reach of each other. Here, just a few miles separate the Great Lakes, with their links to the broad Atlantic, from inland rivers feeding the mighty Mississippi and Gulf of Mexico. Early explorers realized that in this place, two worlds would come together, that an entire continent would pivot on the small patch of ground between them. That patch of ground? Chicago. The Chicago Maritime Museum is here to tell that story and make our past accessible and relevant to the future we all share. It's the kind of institution our city needs more of. It's also the kind of institution that requires charitable support to achieve its potential. By showing how Chicago found its soul and gained its place in the world, you can make the past a powerful force for future generations. So tonight, we thank you all for joining us to support the Chicago Maritime Museum and celebrate our mission and accomplishments. It's sure to be a fun evening steeped with maritime history and entertainment. So many people came together to support us this evening. While all contributors will be acknowledged tonight, we wish to call out a huge thank you to our master sponsor this evening, Captain Dave Truitt, for his $25,000 donation to the museum. Gifts like these help sustain and grow our museum for the next generation of maritime enthusiasts. Thank you, Captain Dave. Now I would like to introduce our MC for the evening, CMM board member, Anil Ahuja. Take it away, Anil. Good evening, friends of the Chicago Maritime Museum, and welcome to our first hour, first hour CMM festival. I'm so happy and excited to be here among the friends. My name is Anil Ahuja. I am an ex merchant marine engineer and now run an engineering company that work on the waterways of Illinois, very fitting mission with the mission of museum. And I also serve on the board of directors of the Maritime Museum. So please join me tonight with the drink of your choice. Hey, I am drinking bubbly on the Bubbly Creek. Since this is a historical drink of launching the ships. And so cheers, let's launch tonight and get this party started. Not only do we celebrate four years of our museum, we tonight, we embark on a something entirely new. You are here on the ground floor of a major partnership program to sustain, not only to help sustain, but to grow our museum for a number of years to come. So I'm very happy tonight <clears throat> to honor esteemed Captain Bill Pinckney this evening. He was featured, he was just featured by default last week in Chicago Suntem. Can you believe that? And we recognize him tonight for his great work teaching school children during his solo voyage, solo exploration around the globe on his sailboat. Guess what the name of the boat was? Commitment, such a fitting name. And despite the stormy weathers and difficult journey on 22 months, Bill Pinckney stayed committed. And I'm very familiar with this, working in the oceans for 10 years myself, what that means. I'm happy and happy to proudly introduce Captain Bill Pinckney, who recently celebrated his 85th birthday. Can you believe I look like a kid in front of him? I just celebrated my 65th birthday yesterday, and I feel like I'm his kid. Long live Bill. 
with due respect take it away captain good evening my fellow chicagoans and friends of the chicago maritime museum unfortunately i can't be with you tonight in chicago but i'm coming to you remotely from my home in puerto rico not many solo sailors who sail around the world get their start in fresh water i did in lake michigan living on the south side i used to watch it all the time and it led me to go around the world it's a rough place on lake michigan and it taught me many things that i learned to see it's a formidable place asked ted turner he knows as i sailed around the world i learned a few things my odyssey taught me so much i'd like to share some of those things with you tonight and maybe they could be helpful in your life everything you've seen tasted heard felt smelled all of those things go into your brain and what happens is over a period of time you develop a method of having them stored there if you have them stored in times of crisis you'd be amazed what comes from that in times of crisis i did things that i didn't think i could do and i don't know where i learned them but again that found out that i was smarter than i thought i was A lot of times you think you know something that you really don't know. And that's what leads to deep trouble. Carpenters always say, measure twice, cut once. That's one of the things we have to learn is that lifetime learning is an important thing. And don't overexceed our abilities by not having the knowledge that it takes to get the job done. Help is always there if you're willing to ask for it. My project would never have gotten underway without the help of friends. Some people say asking for help is a sign of weakness, but it's really a sign of strength. The strength in knowing that no one does anything completely alone. Always remember, be willing to ask. You'll find that you have help even when you don't think you do. The motivational speaker Les Brown used to always say If I get knocked down, I want to land on my back because if I can look up, I can get up. Commitment got knocked down a number of times, and I always worried about what would happen. But you see, the boats are built to roll up and get up. And that's the thing you have to do. Build getting up into your inspirational and your spiritual and intellectual life. Adversity ends. What you have to do is to hang into it until it ends. My trip was 85% marvelous, 10% miserable, and 5% life-threatening. But I found that if I was willing to hang in there and wait for the adversity to end, it all came out so much better. That's what we must have to learn in life. Adversity always ends. Your job is to hang in there until it does end, and you'll find that you'll get through life better than you could think. if you just hang in there there are things about which you have absolutely no control i thought because i sailed alone i was in control but i found out that i didn't have as much control as i thought but what you have to understand is this although you're, there are things you can't control you must focus on those which you can and just stand by and do the best you can for those things that you cannot control People make nations. Politicians make laws, governments make policies, but it's the people that make the nations. In South Africa, I was there when apartheid or segregation was still in law. It was difficult for me because I had lived through that in the US. But as I met the people, one by one, by one, I found out we were mostly the same. They wanted the same things I wanted. peace in their family, love, a good living, a long life, and to see their children have a better life than their own. Remember, it's the people. Meet them one by one. At 211 degrees, you've got hot water. At 212 degrees, one degree difference, you've got boiling water. The Supreme said, "You can't hurry love." and you can't hurry most things some things will only take as long as it takes 
That's what I found out about my trip. It took me 256 days to go around the world. It takes as long as it takes. I tell young people that no matter who you are or where you're from, what your background is, you can make your dream a reality. If you're willing to stick to it, plan it well, get educated about it, and go forth. 32,000 miles, 22 months, and I made my dream a reality. Dreams really do come true. Stories like mine are why the Chicago Maritime Museum is so important. The museum is here to make Chicago's history in the maritime really stand out. The museum needs your help and support to bring its story and Chicago's story. So like a true Chicagoan, raise your paddles high and bid early and often. Thank you, Captain Bill. What an inspiring speech and fascinating presentation. Sir, sir, you are a true Chicago sailor and we are very proud of your Chicago heritage. So like Captain's Bill commitment, <clears throat> now we ask you for your commitment to help Chicago Maritime Museum, not only to sustain our mission, but to help launch future projects such as Bill Pinckney exhibit that we are planning to launch next year. And now the moment have been waiting for. Reach for your bubbles and grab your paddles. And we bring you live from Chicago Maritime Museum, our famous auctioneer, Greg Dellinger. Thank you so much. And his special guest, another famous person in the world, Abraham Lincoln. Hello, from <laughs> and Lincoln. oh my God, who is that? That's a 17th century French explorer Louis. I'm, I can't oh, believe it. You just came alive again. Here we go, Bill. <laughs> All Greg. right. Thank you so much, Anil. Well done. Good evening, everybody. And how do you do? My name is Greg Dellinger, call sign G Man. I work at a local aviation support company, and I am excited and delighted to be here with each and every one of you this evening, live as it happens at the Chicago Maritime Museum. While joining together everybody to raise necessary and vital funds right now on our much needed Chicago institution. I'll be taking you on a virtual tour through our amazing guests, everybody. We'll be talking a little bit about the money that we raised this evening and exactly where it'll be going. So first friends, as we began our evening, a little blocking and tackling as to how you will be bidding this evening. Friends, we have seven levels that will be asking for your financial support. We'll start off high at a transformational level and we'll work our way all the way down to collective impact. Now on everybody's screen, it's usually at the bottom, is a small hand. So when we get to the level, the financial level that we can count on you for, just simply hit that little hand, it'll go up. And then our amazing staff here at the museum, everybody will notate that. And then on the back end of things, we'll take care of all the business and connect with you. So once again, we're gonna start off high at a transformational level and we'll work our way all the way down to our final level. So once we get to that level, raise that hand up good and high. Now make sure you put it back down as well. So we don't think maybe there's somebody who's absolutely amazing out there who will be at every single level. So that's how we're going to be doing it. Now, friends, before we begin, we have permission. Permission this evening right here at the Chicago Maritime Museum. Permission for each one of you to be outrageously kind, irrationally warm, and perhaps improbably generous. And we'll ask for your financial support this evening for you to partner with us, everybody, with grace and respect, 100% stakeholder confidence, 
We will give you some context exactly what your money will be doing this evening. And of course, everybody, the immense love that everybody here and beyond, because now through Captain Bill, we have a global audience, a true love, a true passion for the water, for the waterways that made Chicago, Chicago, everybody, and beyond. So with that, we know with COVID, it will end. We have a present to support and a future to aspire to. So in true Chicago fashion, friends, I know each and every one of you will be shocked that we have a challenge here this evening. Being the second city, friends, we know Captain Bill would have it no other way for you to commit to us. So we have a challenge of the first $10,000 that we raise this evening globally. The first $10,000 will be matched by an anonymous donor dollar for dollar. So once again, as we saw with Captain Bill, an amazing product and person of Chicago who went to elementary school 10 blocks away, graduated from Tilden High School, not more than seven blocks away, right through Canaryville, everybody. He has taught us that each and every one of us as shipmates and sailors, that we have a passport to the world. So full speed ahead, friends, with our first giving level. Is there somebody out there right now that could raise that paddle? And I know this is a strong ask, get bold and gentle as I can make it, friends, at that $10,000 level. If that is you, hit that icon, put it up good and high, and I know this is a strong ask, yet we have, again, a future to aspire to. You know, over the last six, seven months or so, we've had to deal with COVID to reopen our amazing museum. We had to deal with storm damage, take care of our amazing staff and all the outreach activities. So our first level is at $10,000. And we know that's a strong ask. Yet if that is you, raise that paddle and we can match up that first 10. Yet we absolutely know globally that it takes many friends and many donors to make what we have and the future that we are driving for everybody happen. So our next level is a gift of $5,000. $5,000 friends, what would that do? And to help us along with our $5,000 level, let's bring in ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Louis Lavoisier. Now, Louis, I know that you came originally to the Chicago area by canoe. Tell us a little bit about that voyage. And I think you went through the Bubbly Creek. Is that correct? Oh, we, in uh, 1673, we came through here. Back. Okay. Oh, a little bit, yeah. We uh, went down the Mississippi to Arkansas. And okay. on the way back, we were told a better route to the Great Lakes was through an area called Chicago. That is absolutely amazing. Now, when you first arrived here, what was it like? What was Bubbly Creek right? And I honor you for that, just we know that territory. What was it like and how many people were here? It probably was very small, is that correct? Uh, Bubbly Creek was not a, even a river you would think of. Uh, it's been dredged to drain right. uh, for the stockyards. Right. But back then we just, uh, you know, we did, went by it and don't think about it. Absolutely. Well, well done. Thank you so much for your perseverance, the grit and the resiliency. And that's what friends it's going to take this evening, that grit, that resiliency. So that was a $5,000 answer. There's no doubt about that. So if that is you friends, hit that paddle right now, that handle go up and then you can put in, we will know that you can put in your name right there. And of course, if you're having challenges, you can just simply use the chat bar friends and acknowledge that and our team, everybody who's monitoring everything from the museum and all over the Chicagoland trading area will take care of things. Now, Louie, I know that there was a little bit of storm damage that happened here. So um, that's obviously, you've paddled through many, many things and been through many, many storms yet. Tell us a little bit about that and sort of the plan to sort of move through that. I've been to the museum two, three times in the standup of this virtual activity, 
with Captain Bill and Anil, everybody. So I've seen that the work is going on. So what's our plan? I mean, the water was what, 18 to uh, 18 to 24 inches high, is that correct? Well, for me, it was very exciting to be able to paddle through the museum, but uh, <laughs> for most of you, probably not so much. Uh, we had to take the drywall off the bottoms yes. and the doors had to go. Uh, very fortunately, all the artifacts were safe. Okay, fantastic, so. great. Well, thank you so much for that immediate work to take care of things. So we started off at $10,000, then we worked our way to 5,000. Now friends, our next level is a gift of $2,500. If that is you friends, once again, raise that paddle good and high. Step forward right now as we go forward. As we learn from Captain Bill friends, as Anil said, the name of his beautiful sailboat, his vessel was the commitment. And we ask you tonight to make a commitment with us. Once again, we started at 10,000. We have our match going on, friends. Then we move to 5,000, and now we're at the $2,500 level. And friends, worth way more than 2,500 because the entire state is named after him in a complete transformation. Let's bring back Abraham Lincoln, everybody, our amazing president at the $2,500 level. Folks. Abe, so much, uh, it's so kind of you to be, you look fantastic too. It is so kind of you to be here. Now, tell us a little bit about, now before you became president, you did many, many things. And I understand that you at one point uh, were, the, were uh, on a paddle boat, is that correct? Well, not quite. Okay, maybe give us a little I was context captain, around that. I was captain of a rowboat. Oh, you were captain of a rowboat. Okay. And I rowed passengers out to passing steamers. Okay, so out to the steamer. And of course, um, what an amazing uh, opportunity that was. Now, I also understand doing my due diligence, because as we know, as shipmates and sailors, and we are together this evening at the $2,500 level, is we always prepare as good sailors. Now, I know when I was preparing that when you were out on that rowboat, you actually saw one of the steamers explode. Is that correct? No. Okay, maybe put some context around that. <laughs> well, yes, the Midwest waterways are no strangers to disasters. Okay. But um, the Sultana disaster was after the Civil War. Right. Uh, Union prisoners of war were coming back from Confederate prison camps. Yes. A little bribery here. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> a little kickback yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. A little taste of the action. Oh my god. A ship oh. designed for 300 people had yes. over 2,000 oh my loaded onto it. Okay. Uh, steamed off and promptly exploded and killed about half of them. Wow. All right. Well, fortunately, everybody, we are moving forward again with our enormous ask, everybody, as we try to raise the necessary funds. So now I know there's some outreach going on here as well as shipbuilding at the museum. Tell us a little bit about that and have you seen that exhibit? And I know that's yeah. kind of being built, rebuilt, if you will, but I know there's a whole model making shipbuilding area. Perhaps touch on that. No, right there. We do have a model shop where models have, a number of the models on exhibit here have been built and other older models have been restored and they've also offered classes. Amazing. Um, in ship, ship model building, ship right. in the bottle building, and uh, wood carving. Absolutely amazing. And of course, a lot of our young people, everybody, once again, we're starting to hit it in a big, big way. So once again, we started off, we have that $10,000 match, friends. So we're a little bit more than halfway there. So our next level, friends, is a gift of $1,000. $1,000, everybody, as our president just talked about, that would be part of our shipbuilding. Yet even more important to that, what Captain Bill, his whole career has been, friends, is that outreach, especially to our amazing young people. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics all goes into running your vessel. So once again, if you can be at that $1,000 level, hit that paddle up good and high, raise it up. Once again, we have our amazing team, everybody. So let's start loading in those gifts. We started off at 10,000. Then we moved friends to the $5,000 level, then the $2,500 level, and now we're at a gift of $1,000. Perhaps you could even chunk it out if you decide to put it on a credit card where maybe it's $250 per quarter, everybody, as you partner and pledge with the museum. We know a bigger audience equals much more fun, friends. It's just like a party on a boat. 
The more folks that we have on it safely, of course, the more exciting it's going to be and the faster we can work as a team. And that's what we're doing here this evening. So if you can be at that thousand dollar level, just simply raise that paddle up good and high. Our team will acknowledge that and we have a ways to go. So friends, our next level, once again, at the thousand dollar level is a gift of five hundred dollars. We're really starting to hit that burner everybody as we go full speed ahead. So if that is you at the $500 level, just simply raise that up in a big, big way. Now, Louis, come on back in here. Tell us about some of the different, yes, some of the different exhibits um, that will be part of post COVID, kind of the, some of the fun things that are going on right now. You could. Well, I think you heard of the Bill Pickney exhibit. Yes, very much We're so. We're going to do that and uh, Skip Novak is an Antarctic explorer and he learned to sail in Chicago. Fantastic, great. So, that is so important is that outreach and to keep things light, tight and bright. Once again, we're at that $500 level and they're coming in in a big, big way. So once again, we have our $10,000 match friends. We're counting on you. We have a present to support and a future to aspire to. I believe in you, you believe in me. We must do it together, everybody. So don't wait. That's what we've learned from Captain Bill. He talked about, don't wait. Now is the time, everybody, to truly go over that horizon. And of course, as you know, as a sailor and uh, a canoeist is, he went around Cape Horn. So he has that earring, that gold earring, which is amazing that you take the, the, the actual sail needle and you actually go through it. It's, I, I, I'd be terrified, <laughs> yet that's amazing. So let's keep doing our work, everybody. Um, let's keep doing it. So once again, we started off at 10,000. Then we went to that $5,000 level. Then we went to 2,500. Then we're at the thousand dollar level. It's still an opportunity right there, friends, to partner with us. That passport to the world is yours right here at the museum. And of course, friends, now we go to that $500 level and let's bring it down to the $250 level. This is where we can really gather together, friends. And Abe, why don't you come on up here? Now, as president, you're the man, the man with the plan at $250. And I, and I know your life, having studied your life so many different times, there were so many parts of your life that you could have easily quit, but you kept on going. And you lost in this race and that race. You did this, you did that. And for whatever reason, you kept on going. Why? Who told you to never, ever give up? Who taught you that? Was that just inside of you? Uh, my mother. Okay, very much all so. All the way. Yeah, my book of her. All right, fantastic. Great. So once again, to all the moms out there, make that gift right now at $250. So once again, we have our tote board up here. We're seeing the gifts come in. We have one for $250. Now's your time. If you're having challenges, just simply go to that chat bar and you can nail that up in a big, big way. Thank you so much, Abraham Lincoln. You're the man. So once again, at $250, make that pledge right now, friends. Once again, where your money is going is to our amazing museum. As we prepare for the reopening, to repair our amazing storm damage, to ensure that our staff is switched on and clicked on and tuned in everybody. And of course, as you heard from Abraham Lincoln, his whole life was about outreach, was about moving around, about listening. And we're listening and it's saying, we have to have these new exhibits to keep things fresh, especially for our young people. And nobody is gonna do that more than of course, the amazing exhibit for Captain Bill. 27,000 miles around the globe, solo, the very first African-American to do it. Let's honor that tonight, friends, at the $250 level. Make that gift right now. Raise that paddle up good and high. The team is ready. We're keeping track. We can see you and we want you to be with us contribute right now, friends. And of course, our final level. And then we'll make a sweep of the entire sea, friends. Once again, let's bring this microphone right in here. Thank you so much. Our final level is a gift of $100. $100, friends. This is where we need everybody to make that connection. I see Louie and Abraham and Anil, everybody. Everybody is clicking on that $100 level. Believe in us. We believe in you, friends. Step forward right now at that $100 level 
by raising that paddle. So whether it's the outreach, the shipbuilding that we'll see friends, the extra repairs that we know are gonna be on the way, the little things that we want to do post storm damage, now is the time. Don't miss out, contribute right now at that $100 level. So to kind of wrap things up friends, first off, thank you so much to Louie and to Abe, give them a round of applause. We have our amazing team here. This is what we're going to be doing, friends. Once again, to wrap things up, because you're here, you're with us. You can participate in a very direct way right now. So once again, we have our $10,000 matching grant. Match it up dollar for dollar. Raise that paddle. Perhaps it's at $10,000. If you'd like to rename anonymous, that's fine. Just hit that panel and then we'll know. Next was our ask of $5,000. Perhaps it's one of our amazing partners within our supply chain here at the museum. Now's your chance. Then we asked for our gift of $2,500 and they're coming in fast and furious. Keep those paddles up good and high. I know my friend Jerry Thomas is out there and he's texting and rallying the troops. Nothing will stop us now, friends, just as we saw from Captain Bill in his amazing journey. And he will come to Chicago and he will be here when we open that exhibit. And then after that $2,500 level, we raised the paddle for $1,000. And then after the $1,000, which was our true make a difference level. And there's so many individuals right now who wanna participate in a direct way. And now your money can do that, friends, at the $1,000 level. And then we move down to 500. I don't want your wife. I don't want your life. I just want to help you with your money. And as we know in the United States, it's only money and they're printing lots of it these days. There's no doubt about it. So friends, perhaps it's at that $500 level where you chunk it out. And then we have gifts coming in at the $250 level. Our buddy Dylan, everybody, our amazing staff. He's, don't let him sit down, everybody. He's at the big board toting things up. We'll take some images of that and we'll of course share. And then of course we move from our $250 level to our $100 level. When I was visiting with Jerry Thomas, everybody, he's like, gee man, how'd you get so good at asking people for money? Well, I'll tell you in a very big, bold way. I went to a bunch of Catholic schools and a Jesuit high school. So I'm all about going into the foreign lands, perhaps where it's a little bit scary. And that's why Captain Bill, 27,000 miles, he said, don't wait. So that $100 level is now, don't wait. Make that gift, raise that paddle. And friends, perhaps there was a gift beyond $10,000. Perhaps there's a gift somewhere in between a special number, a special number that's special to you and your family. And you know how impactful boating and sailing and being near the water, how it's made you feel and the memories you've created. Now is the time to make future memories. Of course, we right now have the present. This is your opportunity. Ultimately, you're with us. So maybe it's beyond 10,000, somewhere in between, or somewhere south of that $100 level. $100, friends, is that second collection. This is how we all participate. And if it's below that, perhaps it's a gift of $35. $35, friends, is literally the annual membership here. We want you with us. You are with us. You're on the team, and there's nothing you can Hello? do about it. So with that, friends, I'm going to bring my good friend, Anil, back up here, everybody, to kind of move forward. We are full speed ahead. You've been so kind, so generous, and so very beautiful. And with that, friends, Anil, if you'd like to come forward, I'll move the podium over. I've got your notes right here. Chat with me, you Richard. On your way. Thank Hi, you so how are much. you? Come forward, I'm good. Everybody. Go to the chat right. box. Thank you. Well, give a big clap. To yes, I'd like to uh, donate $100. What a job. And... His team is of that Ed and Ben Clay. And yes. I wanted to personally thank you. Thank, thank you. thank you, so you all of you, from the bottom of my heart. I cannot thank you enough. What is the mission we have in the Chicago Maritime Museum and helping us sustain and grow this you know, important institution that teaches the history of waterways and maritime history in Chicago. And it's very important that we do not lose it and we continue to grow it and expand it. So hold on, next evening is not getting over. We have yet to stay and there's a, sh you know about Sailor's Fox songs? There's a very unique singer. 
His name is Lee Murdoch. His shanty songs are very popular songs. When you cross the Great Lakes, you can hear the sounds. I crossed the Great Lakes three times myself and used to listen to his folk sailor songs like Wind Jammer, my famous songs. And I even bought a book called Wind Jammer and to learn more. So enjoy the festival, listen to the music that's going to follow, and please, please, please continue to donate. Wow, we just read, I've been just showing the board here, $87,822. Oh my God, what a, what a success. Please keep continuing on. It is such a wonderful night and enjoy the festival and continue to donate to Chicago Maritime Museum. And you will see a little chat box at the bottom of your screen where you can donate whatever amount even $10, whatever you can donate tonight for the cause of the museum. And thank you for sailing with us tonight. So cheers. But before I leave, I, there's a word from our chairman, Doug Walker. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Doug Walker, chairman of the Chicago Maritime Museum. And tonight we thank you, our guests, for joining us to support the Chicago Maritime Museum. This event came together in a very difficult time through the hard work and financial support of many. First, I'd like to thank the festival committee for your many volunteer hours putting this event together. In particular, board member Jerry Thomas, who has become our digital pioneer and chief fundraiser. We'd also like to thank our creative partners who gave us such sound advice and such technical expertise. And of course, a big thank you to all of our event sponsors who truly came on board to not only sustain this museum, but to help us grow in the years to come. To our dedicated members and volunteers, we thank you for your ongoing support. And also, we wish to thank those who have contributed to the museum tonight through the paddle raise. Every amount contributes is big or small, helps the museum to grow and expand so that we can continue to tell the story of Chicago's rich maritime history. Now I would like to turn your attention to the museum's folk singer, Lee Murdoch. Lee. Thank you very much. And it is a pleasure to be with you tonight on such a wonderful evening. I'm so excited to sing about our Great Lakes heritage. And um, I'll start out with a traditional yeah. song that yeah. celebrates yeah. A, a vessel yeah. called the Chicago yeah. the Moonlight. It goes yeah. like this. The tug towed out the moonlight and dropped us in the gale With the schooner long before us, the porter on our tail See your canvas going on to a hearty hired song Hooray for a race down the lakes Oh, the winds out of the northwest and a blowing all the night You can see them big seas rolling with their bomb folk singer and on our summer trail are a half a hundred sail. Hooray for a race down the lakes. Hooray for a race down the lakes. Hooray for a race down the lakes. And on our summer trail are a half a hundred sail. Hooray for a race down the lakes. To the windward of the law, we points our long jet boom, and high atop her main truck goes the old cabin broom. We will never shorten sail till we bury her lee rail. Hooray for a race down the lakes. Our rainbows playing forward and a foaming wake is aft. Her deck is all a slanting beneath her groaning mast. You can see the old man grin as she bullies in the wind. Hooray for a race down the lakes. Hooray for a race down the lakes. Hooray for a race down the lakes. 
thinks. You can see the old man grin as she believes in the wind. Hooray for a race down the lane. Walk upon the foremast at our stern on the dimming shore As we leave the law that damn forth all lovers by the score See you skinning to the lead, hey the groaning mass no heed Hooray for a race down the lakes Our rainbows playing forward and a foaming wake is aft Her deck is all a slanting beneath the groaning mast You can see the old man grin as she bullies in the wind Hooray for a race down the lake. Hooray for a race down the lake. Hooray for a race down the lake. Just let the old ponds roar as they've often done before. Hooray for a race down the lake. Hooray for a race down the lake. Hooray for a race down the lake. We will never shorten sail till we bury early rail. Hooray for a race down the lane. Now that was a song called The Crack Schooner Moonlight. It was collected by Ivan Walton many years ago. And the captain of the Schooner Moonlight, the original captain was a fellow named Dennis Sullivan, who is uh, the namesake of the vessel out of Milwaukee now, the Dennis Sullivan. Now, um, the importance of Chicago is not only at the uh, head of Lake Michigan, but it also is the very, very close to the main waterway in interior of the country, the Mississippi River. And this next song chronicles a very important engineering uh, feat that was completed started in 1834, but completed in 1848. And it's a modern song that was written by a fellow, uh, fellow from the south side of Chicago named Kevin O'Donnell. And it's a song that talks about the building of the Illinois and Michigan Canal. And as a matter of fact, you may not know this, but the chief legal counsel for the i and Commission was, you, you saw him tonight, a fellow named Abraham Lincoln and also uh, one of the main commanders of the Army Corps of Engineers when it was being built was a gentleman named Robert E. Lee, as a matter of fact. They met a generation later in different circumstances. But this is a wonderful song that really talks about the history of the building of the i &M Canal. On the hill behind the chapel in the parish of St. James lies weathered, born and tangled graves with mostly Irish names. The faded flagstone monuments bear witness to a dream that a hundred fifty years ago no one could have foreseen. In the young town of Chicago, on the plains of Illinois, the INM Commission brought in desperate men and boys to have them build a great canal and change the river's flow to wet the Great Lakes waters with the Gulf of Mexico. They came from ports in Galway, from Cork and Baltimore, on the promise of more money than they'd ever known before, to carve a new beginning in the land of liberty. They waved goodbye and sailed across the sea. So bid farewell to famine, it's off to America to work as a navigator for 90 cents a day and hope to dig a fortune by the time they reach the south on the Illinois and Michigan Canal. 10,000 Irish navvies spread out across the land and they picked their way through the mud and clay. They moved it all by hand. While the tyrant can have four men work for a penny without pay As he dreamed about his family in a country far away But empty-handed promises were all he came to know With food and tools in short supply and money running low Though many tried, thousands died longing to be free where the wild blue stem grasses grew as far as you could see. 
And the coming of the railway made their efforts obsolete. Where it ran along the banks before the digging was complete. But the locks were finally opened and they tallied up the cost with no mention of how many lives were lost. So bid farewell to famine, it's off to America. I work as a navigator for 90 cents a day and hope to dig a fortune by the time they reach the south on the Illinois and Michigan Canal. Gone are the locks and the boatyards, the barges and the scows, and the clabbered shacks of Court Town, where the navvies used to house. From Bridgeport to LaSalle and every town along the way, only remnants of that great canal can still be seen today. Neglected through the ages, her water will not flow. Where mule teams haul the river boats, now wild poplar grow. Where canaling was a way of life that I might have tried myself. It's not buried in the pages of some book upon the shelf. And in the corner of the graveyard in the parish of St. James lies a noble Irish nebby who helped pioneer these plains, who fled the great oppression just to build himself a home. Now it's the only piece of sod he'll ever own. So bid farewell and famine it's off to America to work as a navigator for 90 cents a day and hope to dig a fortune by the time they reach the sound on the Illinois and Michigan Canal. On the Illinois and Michigan Canal. Kevin O'Donnell's song, Illinois and Michigan Canal. Now, there's a fellow I'd like to tell you about. He was a schoonerman back in the 1880s, 1890s. And his name was Robert Collin. Actually, even in the 70s, too. And um, Robert got, had a nickname. You know, all the schoonermen, they always, always had nicknames. And his, his nickname was Broken Back Bob Collin. Now, he got that nickname mainly because in 1875, he was in the Cleveland Harbor and he was uh, uh, in the cross trees. And you know, as well as I do, that uh, you always, it's one hand for the vessel and one hand for the sailor, right? Well, he forgot that and he lost his balance and he landed on the deck, you know, 70 some feet below. Broke his back and he was in the hospital for about uh, eight months or so. Of course, now if that happened to us today, you'd be lucky if we were in the hospital for eight days, right? Well, and ever since then, he was known as Broken Back Bob. Now, all these sailors had, uh, there was one fellow I met even uh, just a few years ago on one of the schooners. He was known as Lunch Bucket, you know. Um, and Bob Collin had a good friend of his who enjoyed, uh, named Jim, who enjoyed uh, spirits. And one night he made a mistake. And ever since he made that mistake, he was known as Gasoline Jim. So this gives you an idea of the humanity that you're going to hear in this a uh, poem that uh, Bob Collin wrote for Ivan Walton, and it's called Up Anchor. It goes like this. Oh, we got the rusty mud hook up. She's green with Chicago sign. We're sailing in a greater wind, the water on city's grind. We'll head for the old blue waterways and mates, we'll drink our fill. Of winds that hail across the bar, and through the hatches spill. Oh, we'll drink Jamaican Cussel up before our trip is done. We'll fight and pray and fight again to spray that place of town. We'll sit around the folks and let each man and his bird beat. And we'll slap the greasy cards about and play in the county beat. Hello, 
cocktails and talk of all the sailor men will do. We'll brag of girls in other ports and wonder if they're true. We'll sit around the porch and laugh, each man in his bird feet. And we'll slap the greasy cards about and play the candy beat. Oh, we'll hate each other worse than rats that be the sinking ship before we reach another board and get this tub to slip. When we drop the hook, the mate will say, I'll laugh and get your pay. Then we'll roll ashore and spend our dough, then ship another day. Anchor, that's called. Now, I'd like to sing a, a sad song now, and this talks about uh, Chicago maritime history, certainly. And uh, it's centered on uh, in September of 1860. There was a vessel that plied the waters of Lake Michigan up to Collingwood and Lake Ontario, and even went up into uh, Lake Superior named the Lady Elgin, or if you're from Canada or, or Scotland, Lady Elgin. And uh, we learned it as Lady Elgin. And uh, she was a packet vessel. Um, and she uh, was a, a paddle wheeler, paddle wheeler, side wheeler. And she steamed up and down. And back in those days, the 1860s, they had to what they call wood up. They had to get wood. They weren't using the coal, which had more BTUs in it. So they had to stop periodically, which made it very nice for a passenger service. And it just so happened that between Chicago and Milwaukee, um, it would uh, stop in Milwaukee on its way uh, up the lake and then have a destination in, in Chicago and then return the next day. So there were a lot of Milwaukee folks that they used it kind of as a, a day excursion. They could go down to the city. And uh, in uh, September um, 7th, I believe, they uh, came into Chicago and, and docked. And later that night, um, they departed uh, for the uh, downbound lake on Lake Michigan. And that's when tragedy struck. And uh, there's a vessel called the Augusta that was uh, hauling uh, lumber bound for South Chicago. And off of Winnetka, um, they collided in a big storm around midnight. Now, typically what'll happen is that uh, if there's a vessel in, in peril, you'll stand by to render assistance. Um, the front of the Augusta was stove in. Um, and so the people on, uh, the sailors on the Lady Elgin said, well, go ahead, do what you gotta do, figuring that they were gonna be fine. And as it turned out within 20 minutes, she had sunk and uh, over 300 people lost their lives really affected uh, maritime law after that. Um, and this particular song was written by a Chicago songwriter, uh, Henry C. Work, and just within a very short time after the vessel sank and it became very, very popular. And I was asked many years ago to sing this song uh, and I liked it, but I, I thought there was so much that Henry didn't put into the song, so much stories that I had found out about. And so what I ended up doing was don't tell anybody, but, but I wrote three verses to a song that was already 140 years old. You know, it's, you really shouldn't do that, but I was so compelled and, and you'll be able to tell where that is. So this is a, a, a wonderful, a sad uh, part of uh, Chicago maritime history called Lost in the Lady Elgin. Up from the poor man's cottage, forth from the mansion door, sweeping across the valley, and echoing along the shore, caught by the morning breezes, born on the evening gale, comes the voice of morning, a sad and solemn wail. Lost on the Lady Elgin, sleeping to wake no more, numbered with those three hundred who failed to reach the shore. Staunch was the noble steamer, Precious the freight she bore. Gaily she loosed her cables a few short hours before. Grandly she swept our harbor, joyfully rang her bell. Little thought we ere morning, twould toll so sad a knell. 
lost on the Lady Elgin, sleeping to wake no more, numbered with those 300 who failed to reach the shore. A thunderstorm at midnight, big seas began to roll, 100 miles of water was the noble steamer's goal, but a fatal slash on her port side from a schooner bearing pine, an eerie silence shrouded all the dying engines whined. Lost on the Lady Elgin, sleeping to wake no more, numbered with those 300 who failed to reach the shore. And here's to Captain Wilson, may his soul forever rest, when his noble steamer plunged beneath the surging crest, leading songs and prayers for every woman, man, and child. He bravely faced the elements on that long night so wild. Lost on the Lady Elgin, sleeping to wake no more, numbered with those 300 who failed to reach the shore. And here's to Edward Spencer, who lived along the shore. That night the waves came breaking in with cries above the roar. Sixteen times he plunged into the boiling surf to rest. Another soul to safety asking, did I do my best? Oh, hear the sound of children crying for parents gone. Children slept that evening, but orphans woke at dawn. Sisters for brothers weeping, husbands for missing wives. Such were the ties dissevered by those 300 lives. Lost on the Lady Elgin, sleeping to wake no more. Numbered with those 300 who failed to reach the shore. Lost on the Lady Elgin, sleeping to wake no more. Numbered with those 300 who failed to reach the shore. Well, thank you very much for allowing me to be a part of this wonderful festival. It's always fun to gather uh, in whatever way we can in these COVID times. And I'll finish up with probably the most popular of the lake ballads of all time. Well, at least of the 19th century, let's put it that way. A song that celebrates a vessel that was actually built in Cleveland, Ohio, but traveled to Chicago many, many times and worked in the iron ore trade. Named after an industrialist called E.C. Roberts, this is called the Red Iron Ore. I'll leave you with this. Come all you bold fellows that follow the lakes With an iron ore vessel you're living to make I shipped in Chicago, do 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 to the shore Found for Escanaba and the Red Iron Ore Carry down, 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 dairy down in the month of September, the 17th day, two dollars and a quarter was all they would pay. On a Monday morning, from the North Branch to take the school, see Roberts out into the lake. Dairy down, 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 dairy down. Now the wind from the south through it blew a fresh gale, and down through Lake Michigan the Roberts did sail. Down through Lake Michigan the Roberts did roar, and on Wednesday morning we went to Death's door. Dairy down, 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 dairy down. This packet then crossed the mouth of Green Bay, and from a cut water she dashed the white spray. We rounded Sand Point, the anchor let go, folded up all the canvas, and then went below. Dairy down, 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 dairy down. Next morning we hauled alongside the exile, then was made fast to an iron ore pile. They lowered the chutes like thunder did roar. They spouted into us the red iron ore. Dairy down, 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 dairy down. Then the tug Escanaba, she towed out the minch, 
It was there that they thought they'd left us in a pinch. They gave us three cheers as they passed by, saying, see you in Cleveland next 4th of July. Derry down, 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 Derry down. Across Saginaw Bay, then the Roberts did ride, with dark and deep water rolling over her side. And straight for the river, the Roberts did go, where the tug Kate Williams took us in tow. Carry down, 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 dearly down. So now we're in Cleveland, made fast and stern. Over a bottle, we'll spin a good yarn. Here's to Captain Harvey Shannon, who had ought to stand treat for getting us to Cleveland ahead of the fleet. Derry down, 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 Derry down, Derry down, 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 Derry down. Thank you so much for uh, participating. Thank you. Hey, thank you very, very much. And to all of you who have contributed, we have raised almost uh, $8,000 tonight. Um, I talked to the anonymous donor and he's gonna chip in the full 10. So we are about $87,000, $88,000 towards our goal. We have till the end of the year to make it. So it's not over yet, guys. Uh, keep donating, keep supporting us, and keep having fun. It's a tremendous honor to be part of this museum. Thank you. Good evening. <laughs>